I think sometimes it's more than okay to take a step back and revisit the roots that I had when it came to falling in love with the sport of hockey. Now, I think a lot of you know this, but part of the reason why I'm even a hockey YouTuber who does videos in the way that I do it is because part of the reason I even became a hockey fan in the first place was because I played the NHL video games. And as a result, you can see that I have a channel pretty much revolving around that. The NHL series is a tax write-off for me every time it comes and goes and I buy the game every year. But there is indeed a very interesting part of the video game itself that ignited a different kind of love within me when it came to the real-life NHL. And that, my friend, happens to be the prospects. In franchise mode, be a GM mode, prospects were super important, and as a result, when it came to me trying to build my own teams from scratch with draft picks and other guys that had elite potential, etc, etc, I became obsessed with looking at prospects, and as a result, it translated into my love for the game in real life because I would look at prospects in drafts and be like, yeah, that guy's gonna be pretty good. That guy's a good player. That other player, not so great. I like the first player more. Oh, then there's this other third guy that actually has a really good shot, or his work ethic is really good, but his hockey sense isn't the best. There's like a hundred million conversations we can have about the different prospects in the NHL, the ones that have been drafted, the ones that have not been drafted, and the ones that are going to be drafted soon. This is sort of my favorite type of video to do. Because all we're doing is we're talking about a guy that is in an NHL system already, and we're talking about how gosh darn good he is going to be. Ah, Lego, you can't go out there and spend a minute and 40 seconds talking about nothing before introducing the prospect. Hey, sure I can. I love a little foreplay in these commentaries, baby. I want to get it introduced and properly set up. Let's go over to the Twin Cities, specifically Minnesota, and talk about a prospect that I feel is one of the most underrated names to being a Calder candidate for 2022-2023. And I think that if this guy wins the trophy it really shouldn't come as a surprise at all. To introduce a player, we're going over onto the NHL Ranking Twitter account because what Mason ends up doing here is collaborating the results of his app, the NHL Rank King app. It's a very good app. And the users on the app into writing out a list of the top 20 fantasy forward prospects. Now, keep in mind, this list is done by you. It's done by the people that use the NHL Rank King app who go onto the daily quizzes and see, oh, would you rather have this player or that player, that player or this player? And... A collected pool of people, I think it's in the few thousands over there, select who they would rather have over another. As a result, you have yourselves this list of the top 20 fantasy forward prospects in the NHL, and topping the list, making himself known as the best fantasy forward prospect in the NHL, is Minnesota Wild ninth overall pick, Marco Rossi. Now, I get it, this is fantasy, so it's in terms of points, in terms of shots, in terms of goals and assists and plus-minus and stuff like that, so there are different factors that help other players over selections of certain other guys, but when it comes to the end-of-the-day results, Marco Rossi is an absolute force to be reckoned with, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to go out there and talk about his profile, just see what he could do next season, and talk about where we have gone so far with his development. So, it's been three minutes, let's go over the profile here. Marco Rossi was born on September 23rd, 2001, making him one of the oldest players in the 2020 NHL Entry Draft. He's 20 years old, 5'9", 183, as an Austrian-born center who had been playing in the OHL prior to being drafted. Now, in his 2019-20 season, his draft year, he actually did go ninth overall, even though he was the best player in the CHL in terms of his overall point production, he had 120 points in 56 games played, 39 goals, 81 assists, and what Marco Rossi did in that season's worth of play is he showcased that he's just a guy that knows how to do everything right. When he has the puck in the offensive zone, he rarely makes a mistake. He's able to play make with elite vision, finding guys and cross seam passes. He's got the skill to be able to pull that off. And when he's got no options, he's really good at freeing up space for himself, exploiting open ice, manipulating opponents out of position so he could take over that open space and assessing his options from there. Sure, He's one of the oldest players in the draft. And sure, he's only 5'9", but when it came to his offensive potential, there was so much to love about Marco Rossi that there's a reason why some scouting outlets had him as high as, let's see, the highest rank over here, fourth overall by elite prospects. He probably should not have gone ninth. In fact, he probably should have been the first Ottawa 67 taken off the board because... I love Jack Quinn, but I don't really think the guy has the same ceiling that Marco Rossi does when it comes to being able to score points. 
But at the end of the day, Marco Rossi went ninth. He was a Minnesota Wild guy. And then the pandemic happened, which is where the worst case scenario or near the worst case scenario actually occurred. Marco Rossi ended up taking an entire year's worth off from hockey because he got diagnosed with myocarditis. This happened as a result of him getting the virus in the first place. This is in 2020, 2021, so it was before we had the vaccines and everything coming out. And as a result, both Marco Rossi's career and Marco Rossi's life were put on pause. And it was very scary going out there and reading all the articles talking about his condition and what was going on with his body and how he himself was reacting to the situation. It was very, very ugly. But fortunately, he is still here, and he is back and better than ever. The reason I say that is because in the most recent season, 2021-2022, sure, he played two games with the Minnesota Wild, he had zero points, but in the AHL for the Iowa Wild, Marco Rossi had 18 goals and 35 assists for 53 points in 63 games played. Now, he was only 20 years old this season in the AHL, and as a result, he was one of the top 20-year-olds in the league. He was fifth overall behind Lucas Reichel, Jack Quinn, Jakob Pelche, and JJ Paterka. Now, you gotta remember that all these other guys didn't really have a year off in a scare for their own health because of myocarditis, so Marco Rossi being here, not first, but still in the top five, it's good enough in my opinion. Then you go over onto the Minnesota Wild subreddit, and you have a post here that I wanted to read out for you. Can someone give any insight on Rossi and how big of a talent he is? Posted by Stadio Fruley. Let me preface this by saying I'm not really into the NHL whatsoever, but as an Austrian, I'm kind of interested in this boy's career. I just came across an article in one of our newspapers where Rossi said he feels ready to play in the NHL from now onwards. Is there a chance he can make the jump? Is he considered a big talent for you, or even in the entire league? Well, to answer your question on the latter part, Stadio Furley, he was the top-ranked fantasy forward prospect on the NHL ranking app by users of everybody, not just Minnesota fans, so it would appear that the rest of the league's fan bases do indeed see tremendous value on him. Let's read some of the comments on this Reddit post. The Gritty says he is a huge talent, and the Wild are depending on his development. Dirtz McGirt says they went ninth overall in a really deep draft class. He's a bit undersized, and he had a health scare that caused him to miss a year, but he's still one of the better center prospects in the NHL. He had a good year overall last year, but he definitely needs to get stronger and adjust to the pro game still. I don't know if he'll make the team right out of camp, but I'd expect that he will get a decent run of games at the NHL level this year. Best case scenario, he can fill a top six center role this year. Realistically, I think that's probably an unfair expectation. Long term, he projects to be a top six center, which is a highly valuable player at a highly valued position that should be in a big role in the organization for the next several years. He then had Mighty Miami saying, you know Thomas Vanek? Of course you do. They're hoping Rossi can be like Vanek, who also played for the Wild, but be a solid centerman. Something Vanek was not. He's a top 10 prospect in the NHL, so the potential and the expectation is indeed there. Now, I'm going to go out there and say this. I feel like from what Marco Rossi was in his draft year, if this guy ends up scoring like 90, 95 points in an NHL season, I honestly would not be too surprised. He was so good, so offensively competent, and so good at adjusting on the fly in the OHL and in parts of the AHL this season that... All you gotta do is hope that that translates to the top pro league in the world. Sure, he's only 5'9", and sure, he might be a tad older than the rest of the competition that was drafted in 2020, but at the end of the day, this is still one of the top forward prospects in terms of his overall fantasy point production and his talent capacity in general. This is a player that if he's playing with Kirill Kaprizov, he might be able to go out there and score, let's say, 50, 60, 70 maybe points in his rookie season just because? I mean, if he goes out there and he does that, I wouldn't be really too surprised. If he goes out there and he only gets 20 points, I wouldn't really be too surprised either. There's a big jump from the AHL to the NHL. But at the end of the day, there really is so much faith that I have in the projection and potential of a guy like Marco Rossi that anything under the sky, I feel like, is a realistic possibility for what he could eventually be at the NHL level. He's only 20 like now, so there still is a lot more time for Marco Rossi to go out there and become something bigger at the NHL level. It's just, of course, you would probably have liked to see a little bit more of that earlier, but you can't go out there and argue with myocarditis, right? So talk to the comments, Minnesota Wild fans, on your thoughts about Marco Rossi, the prospect profile he has, how good do you think he'll be at the NHL level, and what do you think he's going to accomplish next year in your organization? Minnesota, Iowa, top six, penalty kill? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Rolls 99.
and bye.